Celgene Corporation. That is the stock that we're going to be analyzing in today's video. Quick shout out to Cameron who sent me this stock. He sent me a very detailed email outlining everything that the stock is all about. And I had a look and it looked really good for, at a first glance. So I thought I'm going to make a video about this. As per usual in my analysis videos, we're going to start off with a brief overview of what the company is, what their business model is, that sort of thing. Then we're going to jump into the economic moat or the long-term competitive advantage of this company. Then we're going to go over and have a look at the ROIC and debt levels, followed by those four key growth numbers, which is earnings per share, equity, sales, and free cash flow. Then we're going to have a look at the value matrix to see what return we can expect to get over the next 10 years. And finally, we're going to do an intrinsic valuation and see what buy, hold, or sell decision we come up with for this stock. As always, I have to say that I am not a financial advisor, so everything here is just for entertainment and educational purposes only. If you are going to be investing in any businesses, make sure you do your own research and don't just follow the advice of one YouTuber. Make sure you seek out other opinions to get a broad perspective of all of the opinions out there before you go and invest your hard-earned money into a stock. If you're new around here and you enjoy the content, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, make sure you become a VIP through the link in the description so that you get 24 hours early access to all my content. Solgin is a global biopharmaceutical company that is focused on discovering, developing, and commercializing drugs mostly related to cancers and immune-related diseases. They currently have a market capitalization of 65 billion, a PE ratio of 25, and they do not pay a dividend. Understanding the businesses that you're investing in is vital to long-term investments because you need to be able to understand when news comes out, what it means for the future of a business. Personally, for me, pharmaceuticals is outside of my circle of competence. It's outside of the area of my expertise in business. So for me, a stock like Celgene would just be way too risky because when news comes out about a new drug or some sort of issue in development, I'd have no idea what it means for the longevity of that company. So for me personally, this would be a too much of a risky investment. So now let's talk about the economic mode or the long-term competitive advantage that Celgene may or may not have. Now, as I said, this company is and pharma is outside of my circle of competence. However, I did a little bit of digging to see if Celgene has a long-term competitive advantage and if so, what is it? So I found out that the core of Celgene's business is in blood cancer drugs, including ones such as Revlimin, which is the second biggest selling drug in the entire world. However, several drug companies have challenged the patents that Celgene has on these drugs. So that puts the long-term competitive advantage for Celgene at risk. And this is where understanding the industry and the business is fundamental to investing because you need to be able to make judgments on the sustainability of Celgene's products and other companies' products depending on whatever market it is. So if you don't know the industry well enough, you're not going to be able to make accurate judgments about the sustainability of a company's products. Next, we'll have a look at the ROIC to see if management of Celgene is investing effectively over the past five years and over the past one year. Celgene's five-year ROIC is 14.5%, which is excellent. It beats our 10% minimum requirement. And as for the one-year ROIC for Celgene, it is just over 12%, which does beat our 10% minimum requirement. However, it is lower than the five-year average, which means they've become less effective as time has gone on, which is not a good sign. However, both of those numbers are fairly close together and they're very strong. So it's not a huge problem in the scheme of things if all of the other aspects of the business are great. Now we wanna have a look at debt to make sure that this company doesn't have any out of control debt obligations and is gonna get in trouble if we get into a recession, interest rates rise, that sort of thing. The current ratio for Celgene is 4.99, which is insane. It means that they have just under five times as much current assets as current liabilities, which is excellent. It means they're easily able to cover their short-term debt obligations. However, if we have a look at the debt to equity ratio, we can see that it is 3.36, which means that they have three times as much debt in the company as equity, which isn't a great sign for a shareholder because it means that if a company needs to liquidate itself and sell all of its assets, it means that they're gonna have to use everything they have to pay off those debt obligations and there's not going to be anything left for the shareholders at the end of the day. A lot of companies do take on large amounts of debt because it's cheaper than selling more shares on the market because generally debt uh, creditors require 
a lower return on investment than shareholders do. So that's why companies load up on debt. Um, and it's often fine to load up on debt. I mean, it's not necessarily going to be a bad thing. However, if interest rates do rise and those debt payments start to pile up and companies start to pay off their interest payments with by acquiring more debt, this is where businesses get in trouble. And personally for me, I just wanna stay away from businesses where there isn't more equity in the company than debt. So now we're past all of the boring stuff. Let's get into the fun stuff. Let's have a look at those four key growth numbers of sales, earnings per share, equity, and free cash flow, and see if this company has been growing sustainably over the past 10 years. So at a first glance, you can see that for three of these metrics, the numbers look great, and for equity, it is a bit lacking. Sales growth over the long term is great, 22%. However, this has been getting smaller and smaller each year, so it's gonna be difficult to use those long-term numbers to predict where this company is gonna grow in the future because if that trend continues and we use 20% or 22% in our uh, future projection for where this company is going, it's just not going to be accurate because in the last year they just did 16% and each and every year it's been getting smaller, so what's to say that over the next 10 years it doesn't continue to fall, going 14, 12%, 9%. Next, we have the EPS, and we don't have a nine-year EPS number because in 2008, they had negative earnings, which means we couldn't calculate the growth over that period. However, all over all, over all the other periods, it's been really great, 21% over the last seven years, and then we had 17 and 15% in the five and three, and this year, they really ramped it up and did 46% growth, which is excellent. Equity growth is very slow and it's also trending down, which is not a really good sign because at the end of the day, equity growth or equity is the core value of the business. It's what the assets minus the liabilities are worth in the company. If we sold everything, paid off all our debts, what would be left for the shareholders? And we wanna see that growing over time because if that grows over time, generally the stock price will grow with it. And lastly, we have free cash flow, which over all of those periods has been excellent. Well over 20% for all of them and even 50% growth over that nine year period. Just before we jump over to the value matrix, if you want access to the spreadsheet, it's completely free and you can access it through one of the links in the description below. It's probably the first or second link. So just click that and you'll be able to access it. And if you wanna learn how to use it, I've got a video on that. I'll chuck a card to it up there so that you can watch that video and do these value analyses by yourself. So having a look at the value matrix now, we can see that there is a lot of positive upside for this company, as long as it's able to continue to grow into the future over the next 10 years. Looking at the bottom table, we can see that the stock price for this company in 10 years will likely range from somewhere between $110 per share all the way up to $2,200 per share with the likely outcomes being probably between 160 and $500 per share. Then we can look at the top table and see what return we would get each and every year depending on how this stock performs. So for example, if the stock does 8.47% growth and it has a PE ratio of 32 in 10 years time, we will earn a return of 11.09% from buying the stock at the current price. So that finally brings us to the intrinsic valuation and let's come up with a decision to buy, sell or hold. So first we need to enter a couple of metrics before we get started. So the trailing 12 months EPS for Celgene has been about $3.60, so we entered that. We're gonna look over a period of 10 years, we're looking 10 years into the future. We're gonna use the current stock price which is 90.26 at the time of recording this. We're gonna have a margin of safety of 50% to allow for any errors in our valuation and the required return or the return that we want to make each and every year over the next 10 years is going to be 15%. So using the auto buy zone calculator, we come up with an estimated growth per year for the next 10 years of just under 17%. And this is in line with analysts who expect that this company will do about 20% growth per year over the next five years. Using that growth rate, we come up with a fair value of about $186 per share, which puts its buy price at about $93 per share, which is just above what the current stock price is, so that makes it a buy. However, 17% is a very high growth rate for this company over a 10 year period. So I would be more cautious and I would be more likely to enter, to manually enter a smaller growth rate to see 
what is a more realistic outcome for this company over the next 10 years. However, remember I did say that I don't know much about this industry or this business specifically. So if you have better insights into pharmaceuticals and you know how these drugs develop and how the longevity of a company like this is over the next 10 years, maybe you could come up with a hypothesis that says that 17% actually isn't too bad of a growth rate to use. So the other growth rate that I like to use is the long-term equity growth. And that's because the stock price tends to mimic the long-term growth of equity within a company. So for Celgene, the long-term equity growth is about 8%, which means we get a fair value of $84 per share, which means the buy price would be low as $42 per share, which is nowhere near what the current stock price is of $90. So if you're thinking about investing in this company and you know a bit about pharmaceuticals and you think this is gonna be a suitable investment for you, you're going to need to decide where is this company gonna grow? Is it gonna grow as low as 8% per year for the next 10 years or is it going to be able to reach those heights of 17% per year? And if it's somewhere in the middle, it's probably still not a buy. It's definitely a sell if it's growing at 8% per year. It's definitely a buy if it's growing at 17% per year and if it's in the middle somewhere, it's probably a hold. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks again to Cameron for suggesting this one. I really like when people send me an email with detailed information about the company because it shows that they've done their own research already into it and they're just seeking a little bit more advice and it's a bit easier for me to just glance at the email and see if this company is gonna be suitable for a video like this rather than having to type in every single ticker and look up their numbers for myself. So if you have any suggestions and you wanna make sure they make it into a video, I would suggest that you either send me a message on Facebook and you can do that through the VIP link in the description below and send me a detailed information or just give me a little bit of information about the company. Tell me what its growth numbers are over the long term so that I know straight away whether or not it's gonna be worth making a video like this. So you can send me a message on Facebook or you can just send me an email and I will try and get back to each and every one of you, although the messages are starting to build up as this channel continues to grow. And actually today we hit 700 subscribers. So thanks to everyone for subscribing and supporting the channel. It's been great seeing this channel grow over the past few months. But for now, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.